So first of all, thank you very much for, for uh, uh, really uh, bringing also, uh, you know, your, your voice of uh, wisdom. And, uh, you know, I think it was very important to, uh, uh, to remind all of us that, uh, you know, there is just eight years uh, before we meet your target uh, uh, that was set by the, uh, by the, the, the roadmap. So, um, uh, so thank you very much for that. So, I will go uh, directly into the uh, uh, just before uh, going into the uh, uh, the topic. I really want to encourage people, uh, including our francophone colleagues, to use this opportunity of the translation, hein? traduction simultanée. Donc profitez-en tous. Hein? <laughs> so it's not a language test. So it's an opportunity for everybody to be able to express, uh, you know, their view without uh, any having having any challenge with the languages. Yes. Okay. So first of all, I, I, I will start by a, a very quick overview of uh, the uh, epidemiological situation. So I keep it uh, uh, very short, but, you know, uh, last year, so I mean, because the last time we meet was in June uh, last year. So uh, and, uh, you know, that cholera are not uh, following uh, the calendar, uh, calendar year. But uh last year was already a very big year uh, in terms of outbreak uh it was the largest outbreak uh, declared in decade in many countries that affected uh, uh countries that have not been affected by by decade as well um so that was characterized in 2021 by a massive increase on both the number of uh, cases a number of deaths and the cfr uh, and that was driven by uh, different dynamic. And uh, so if uh, here, so what I try to represent, it's both, uh, I mean, you know, the country that were affected only on 2021, the one that are been affected in 21 and 22, and the one that are just been affected this year. And you can see that the situation is not getting better in 2022. Uh, in 2021, 21 country reported cholera outbreak. Uh, so these are still preliminary data. As you know, there is uh, uh, the data collection is ongoing and the official data will be published by WHO in September. So there might be a number of other countries. And now we are just in, uh, uh, in June, uh, at the end of June, so half of the year, and we have already the same number of countries that are being reporting being affected by cholera. And there are still six months to go. Of course, it's not all the same country. So things have changed. Last year, second part of this, uh, last year, the focus was really mainly around West Africa, Nigeria, and around. And the focus this year has slightly moved uh, to uh, uh, Eastern and Southern Africa, but also very massively in Asia with a uh, very large uh, outbreak reported and it was mentioned this morning in Dhaka in Bangladesh but now also in Pakistan uh, recently in Iraq uh, and uh, we all know that there are also some countries that have not reported cholera outbreak but that are affected by acute watery diarrhea uh, uh, that need to be taken into consideration as well. So we need to, to be ready to see, uh, uh, also to, to take into consideration what happened last year. And we know that last year there was a shortage on both uh, uh, OCV vaccine, but also in terms of other cholera commodities, it was almost impossible at the end of the year to buy uh, cholera kit and drugs and uh, uh, rapid diagnosis tests because the stockpile were totally emptied. Uh, so there was a very massive uh, support from GTFCC partner. I'm not going to to uh, to mention all of them because uh, you know uh, there are too many of them, and uh, you know I will always forget someone, and that will create some frustration. But really, it's important also to use this opportunity to thank the partner for the support they have provided to country to cope to this very very large outbreak. So. Uh, the, the, the thing I, I really want to, to take a little bit more time on that, it's really the case fatality rate. So, uh, you ca so again, these are preliminary data that will be adjusted with the other countries that have not yet reported. But as I mentioned, there was an increase of both number of cases, number of deaths, but more importantly, in terms of CFR. So on average, a CFR last year was 2.8%. And this is an average, which means that, you know, half of the country have reported an, um, a CFR, which was much higher than the, the, the almost 3%. Okay, so in some provinces or state or whatever, it's, uh, it's uh, raised, uh, you know, two digit figures. This is not morally acceptable. 
Okay, so I think this is very important. Uh, I think we all know that the first objective of the roadmap is to reduce the, mor the mortality by uh, uh, 90%. And this is a very strong step back to compared to what was observed in the previous years. There was a very regular trend of uh, reducing case fatality rate that, as you can see on the graph, really clearly um, uh, as, uh, uh, was very different. And unfortunately, the first trend we are seeing to for 2022 is going on the same direction. So, of course, we, uh, we all know what are the driving factors, and these are really driving factors of the cholera outbreak, the conflict, humanitarian crisis, uh, uh, hunger, climate, national disaster, uh, the, the normal trade and, uh, and other type of movement, sometimes a uh, specific factor, and we know also uh, all of them, and that was mentioned also very clearly this morning in the, in the discussion, the impact of COVID. So these are very uh, legitimate factors, but um, the thing which I think it is very important to remind that it's, you know, basically whatever uh, uh, the other factors are, the basic factors are still the same. People don't have access to safe water, people don't have access to place to, uh, 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 to defecate, and the main problem of the driving is still open defecation, and we are in 2022. Accessibility to healthcare, that's delay uh, uh, case management and therefore increase uh, uh, in increase case fatality and of course poverty and vulnerability because it's always in the same area. So, of course, uh, that will have a uh, major implication. Last year we knew already, so I mean, this is just, I mean, it's also one of the pillars where it's easier to document because we have some figures. So, we all know that the control to cholera must be a multi factorial, uh, multi sectorial response, but um, already by the middle of the year, we know that we are going to face major challenge in terms of uh, uh, OCV accessibility. Okay, so um, so uh, here, what we 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 can see is taking into consideration the uh, emergency vaccination campaign that has been approved by ICG uh, uh, and the one that have been approved for preventive vaccination campaign due to take in place this year, we have uh, approved more doses than what will be produced for the whole of the year and, the, uh, and not even taking into uh, consideration the necessity to keep the uh, uh, emergency stockpile. And again, we are just in June. So, of course, nobody has a crystal ball. Nobody knows what is going to happen in the next six months. But what we saw last year, and that's the only basis we have, is there was much more outbreak in the second part of the year than on the first part of the year. So I hope, again, because this, the area is different, uh, it's not West Africa, but it's uh, other part of the world, the dynamic can be different. But this is, uh, so this is, uh, this is a challenge. And, of course, this will have an impact uh, on the capacity uh, to implement preventive vaccination campaign. As it was discussed this morning, we have uh, unfortunately not been able to approve two of the preemptive vaccination campaign for countries that are you know, at risk of uh, importation due to outbreak in the neighboring area. So this is a reality that needs to be uh, taken into consideration. Uh, so, this is a point that was raised a number of times, so I'm very happy because this is something that I'm trying to push as well. I mean, I think it's very important also to remind every time that there is a continuum between reactive, preemptive, preventive vaccination campaign. It's part of the whole strategy, but I think it's important for everybody, uh, including the country, to be very much aware about the situation that the, the world is facing in terms of accessibility of vaccine and the fact that some of the requests might not be able to be met because uh, uh, of this situation. So I try to put all the bad news at the beginning, so to, uh, to look at uh, the, 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 the progress on the second part of the, uh, uh, <laughs> of the presentation. Before uh, uh, going into progress, I think it was important to, uh, uh, to take a minute to uh, relook at what were the, 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 uh, the key recommendations that came from last year's uh, meeting, uh, last year, uh, annual meeting. So there, there are, I mean, I'm not going to go uh, through all uh, of them one by one. But I think it will be important to see that a number of these uh, 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 recommendations were met, a number were not met. Um, and, uh, um, and clearly, I mean, this is also one of the elements, like, for example, the progress that was made uh, in terms of uh, uh, 
uh, monitoring and evaluation, the development of, uh, uh, of plan and uh, advance on advocacy, etc. This is the kind of things that we uh, uh, are looking forward to hear from the country feedback that are going to come in the, in the, next, uh, in the next two days. So, uh, and that brings us again to the, uh, the point that Fru was, was mentioning. We have been talking about that for, uh, for a few years now you know, the necessity to have, uh, you know, more structured report and uh, follow up, follow up and, uh, uh, and monitoring of evaluation of the effectiveness of, uh, of the implementation of the roadmap. So uh, well, this year, for all the reasons we have mentioned, was a bit complicated, but it's also a kind of, not a warning, but a kind of heads up that next year we'd like to get much more structured feedback from the country in terms of, uh, you know, what are the steps that have been met, uh, what are the challenges, et cetera, et cetera. But to try to get also in a much more uh, formalized monitoring and evaluation framework, which is also going to be important also to, uh, you know, for advocacy purposes, for uh, mm -hmm. trying to find ways to support a country for implementation, et cetera, et cetera. So in terms of clear progress, here yeah, what we can see on both on the map and on the, uh, uh, on the text is all the country that, for, uh, you know, wh when the font is on, on green, it's country that have developed, uh, well here it's uh, the, uh, uh, the hotspot using the GTFCC uh, tool uh, as a basis since last year. And you can see that there is a massive uh, improvement uh, with a, n uh, a very high number of countries that have embarked in this process that have either finalized or are still in progress in a number of countries. So this is, and that, again, I think it's important that to, to, to realize that we are all aware about the difficulties, the, 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 the time it, it requires, and the challenges uh, also for the country that are also facing a conflict, uh, a drought, etc., uh, etc. Et but this is really going in the right direction. And, and here we have exactly the same um, with uh, the development of the uh, of the roadmap uh, and the co national cholera plan, where, as you know, I mean, you know, there are there are uh, you know uh, four um, NCP that were uh, already launched last last year. Out of these four, there are already two that are, uh, although they were launched, are being revised. And this is an excellent initiative, as we know that, uh, you know, uh, uh, an NCP is not something which is engraved in stone and that need to be revised. Um, for the first time, there were two that were endorsed uh, formally by the IERP uh, to, uh, this year, so Ethiopia and Kenya. Uh, there are still one uh, which is in progress, but other countries have uh, engaged uh, also in, uh, in their cholera uh, uh, control plan to, uh, to be able to, to uh, uh, to contribute to the uh, elimination effort. Oops, sorry. So that uh, so we, we mentioned, I mentioned at the beginning that there was some some challenge about uh, you know CV, but I think it's also important to underline the remarkable effort that have been done by partner and by the manufacturer also to improve the, the to increase the production of vaccine over the year. And as we can see, that there have been already more than. 112 uh, million doses being shipped. Some are even uh, being shipped currently now, and that 22 countries have been uh, using that, uh, have been benefiting uh, from that. So, beyond just shipment of vaccines, so I'm not going to go in all the detail that what have been done by all the different working groups because first you will receive soon some uh, uh, some written resume of what was done uh, in each of the working groups and there will be also a second session uh, just after that one uh, that will allow you know the, the chair of the working group to go in the detail but so for CV, I mean, one of the things which I think was very important this year was uh, the really this uh, very successful uh, workshop on uh, uh, training uh, country and um, uh, on the development of uh, OCV request, uh, uh, but also, you know, so not just, you know, reactive, preventive, but also the planning and implementation. So uh, that was a, a very positive uh, progress, uh, multi-partner uh, engagement in that, and I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it was very, uh, uh, very useful. We get very, very good feedback. So this, the first one was organized for six countries, but uh, one will be organized soon in DRC for francophone country, and uh, early next year, another one will be organized in Asia. 
um, so so uh, so congratulations to everybody who work on that. Um, uh, so there have been continuous support that has been provided through different mechanisms uh, to uh, uh, to uh, the, the elaboration of uh, of campaigns through development of consultants, uh, uh, the, the the support from uh, from Gavi for this uh, as well, the country support platform. Uh, in terms of um, so it's it's still not live yet, but uh, it will be soon. Now, so uh, through uh, the, the working group and the, uh, the collaboration with Epicentre dashboard, uh, with all the data for OCV has been developed. So you just uh, a screenshot that you have on the right. So this information will be available to everyone. So uh, you know publicly. So which uh, doses have been used, where, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I think it will also improve information sharing in this regard. And there are many other works that are done in terms of uh, a review of the process of the uh, the request. Uh, techni many technical notes, and again, I'm not going to go into all the detail, but in uh, selecting color hotspot for, for CVUs, development of technical documents to support MOH in country uh, for developing their multi years plan, etc. etc. So, moving to, to the next one, and that was bring us to one of the discussion uh, we had this morning. I mean, again, and this is what I've been saying, I think, for the past two years, uh, surveillance is uh, the cornerstone of, uh, of our strategy. We need to have better surveillance uh, for country to be able to target better their multi-sectorial intervention. We had this discussion this morning about OCV, but this is as important about WASH. Uh, to be able to really prioritize the area where the, the, the it's a priority to, in, to implement WASH, uh, to have uh, better detection, better earlier response, uh, uh, and intervention on the on, on the work uh, on the hotspot. So uh, the uh, so there have been uh, progress. So we are close to, to getting there. So about developing this adaptive cholera uh, surveillance strategy. The objective is clearly not to have a one-fit-all strategy where there will be this guidance where everybody needs to do the same, but really to try to provide some guidance where country will be able to adapt the surveillance to the epidemiological situation that fits to their situation. Of course, you are not doing the same type of surveillance in a country like DRC, Bangladesh, uh, uh, where you have a, a very high level of uh, uh, endemicity. Uh, as you are doing in a country which is close to uh, to elimination or countries that remain at risk uh, of re-importation because of their neighbors. So this is all this panel of of uh, uh, epidemiological situation that need to be um, to be uh, uh, taken into consideration in the elaboration of the guidance. Uh, so uh, there is also this work done on the uh, uh, priority area, so the how to, uh, to, to further develop, and that was a recommendation when the first uh, uh, tool was developed, it's to, uh, you know, to, to enhance the tool to help to integrate additional factors which would make you know, the, the targeting of the hotspot much more precise and much more targeted to different kind of countries, so this is uh, uh, again, something that will be uh, taking into consideration the, the need of adaptation to different contexts. Uh, the cholera free status, so this is uh, uh, bah, uh, also something that might seem a little bit distant for many of the country, but at least uh, uh, in the good news, uh, I just would like to remind everybody that, uh, you know, this year uh, IT has met uh, uh, the target which was three years without reported cholera. So there is, uh, we're not talking about uh, elimination, but at least uh, there was three years without uh, cholera being uh, reported in IT. So, uh, which is a major success. We all know uh, the situation in IT, the vulnerability of the country, the impact of cyclone and all the rest. So, uh, if IT can do it, you can all do it. Uh, so, that's why, I mean, so this is uh, almost finalized. It will be presented to the G uh, uh, GTFCC steering committee today, tomorrow, and uh, hopefully uh, be released very soon. Uh, and uh, last but not the least, but the need we have to uh, continue working in core, in uh, in uh, regional and global uh, surveillance to be able to have a better understanding of you know what is the burden, where are we doing uh, cross border communication. Again, we know that you know many of the hotspots are on bordering area, and we need to uh, to, to 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 break this silo of you know uh, country based only uh, information exchange. So there is a lot of work being done on that. 
So um, on the lab, uh, and I think it's important also to uh, to look a little bit into the into uh, some of the details. So uh, there are a lot of guidance that have been developed. So one will be, uh, I, I hope, published very soon. It's the one on uh, sur uh, environmental surveillance. So just. Uh, reminding everybody that uh, we, we do not recommend uh, looking for cholera in water. Uh, we recommend uh, people to look for cholera in patient. Uh, what is important to do is to monitor the quality of the water for coliform and, uh, and uh, uh, free residue chlorine. But uh, so uh, uh, there is uh, so some pilot that has been done and assessing the lab capacity. Based on that, we'll develop a second level. Uh, some work done on the RDT, um, uh, interpretation of the RDT, and there are still a lot of things that will be uh, coming in, uh, on the next year. And as many of you know, there have been some uh, significant support provided by Gavi on the, the accessibility to uh, a diagnosis test. So this is something on which will provide, uh, you know, uh, I think, yeah, a significant improvement in terms of improving part of the surveillance. It will not solve all the issues of surveillance, but at least the diagnosis, which is a very weak point. So we need to continue working on that, not forgetting the importance of antimicrobial resistance uh, and adaptation of what we have been uh, doing in country to, uh, to, to, to base on lesson learned. Case management, again, that brings us to one of my first talking points. Uh, I know it's written everywhere, but I think this is something that uh, we should uh, have written in all our wall. Uh, we have all the tools to prevent cholera death. So it's not just uh, you know, a word, but you know, it's an easy to treat disease. So it's a moral obligation to make sure that you know people have access to uh, timely uh, health care. It's not acceptable, I think, to have uh, you know this level of case fatality that we are uh, looking at. I'm not blaming the countries that are facing it. Huh? There are many factors that explain that. Just we need to find ways to prevent and to help the country to prevent having to face this kind of situation. So uh, there was a very good scoping review of the mortality uh, uh, cause that was done by the uh, uh, case uh, management working group that basically uh, clearly illustrate how little we know about why the people are dying uh, and the need uh, of uh, you know getting more information. But also, I mean, yes, it's about research, but it's also how can we get access to the information that are already available in country. There are many information, so we need to understand why are people dying. So that will, uh, uh, so that will, uh, this work will uh, uh, will continue. But of course, uh, uh, you know, there are uh, also uh, a, no a number of other very important topics that are under discussion, uh, including the use of uh, antibiotic in CATI, the modeling use of antibiotic on the cholera transmission, but and the monitoring of antimicrobial resistance. Community engagement. I'm sure the one that were there last year remind, uh, remember very well that we had a discussion about that. And uh, I just want to reiterate what I said. I think, you know, uh, I'm totally convinced about the fact that we will not eliminate cholera if we do not bring the community at the center of the strategy. We cannot continue doing things for the people or on their behalf, but to find a way to engage them and to make them responsible and accountable for that. So last year there was some some uh, discussion at the uh, at the uh, annual meeting that was followed at the discussion and endorsement by the steering committee about the fact that we needed to have a kind of you know working group on community engagement. So just want to make it very clear: we still think it's extremely important. Okay, so you know after looking at that, it's much more complicated than we initially thought. Okay, so it's very easy to have a good idea, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But uh, despite the fact that we had good discussion with uh, other partners that are engaged in this kind of things, for example, for COVID, etc. But the key question is how do you transfer it into something extremely theoretic, uh, being sitting <coughs> in uh, in uh, in the U.S., uh, the Americas, Australia, or Western Europe to the community? How do you have the community engaged in the design of this kind of things? And again, not having this top-down approach where people will think about what is good for them. So, uh, so there are a number of things that we need to continue to working and on which we have uh, all together our leverage. It's a political engagement. Uh, uh, this is a point that we have seen in many countries where the political engagement is not good enough. Okay, so I mean, you know, uh, at political level, sometimes it's not very attractive, very appealing. 
to be focusing and working on the poorest, marginalized community, refugee, IDP, nomadic population, etc., etc. So we need to inverse this kind of situation. Um, we need also to take into consideration the need also to, to coordinate at community level because, you know, the number of factors at community level are not uh, that many. So, I mean, you know, they can, and we had the same discussion about OCV and, uh, and the request. I mean, in the community, it's worse. I mean, they cannot be, uh, the same person cannot uh, have a training on meningitis, malaria, yellow fever, COVID, wash, etc., etc. So we need to find a way to have something which is integrated. So, in conclusion, so it's not that we have dropped the case, it's just that I think we need to totally reboot the strategy, to think it in a different way, okay? So this is why the, the creation of the working group has not moved forward. It's not that we have dropped the case, but we need we will need to rediscuss and also with GTFCC partner on how we can tackle these kind of things, but really integrating the field level, which we cannot, I mean, the very specialists from the Secretariat, we cannot include the field level because we are just too far. So uh, more to be discussed on this issue, but again, for me, it's really, really important and it's not just word. And you have heard me telling that 20 times or more, but uh, community engagement is not having t-shirt, caps and banners and posters and flyers. This is not what we are talking about. It's really taking people as adults and taking them as part of the strategy and taking, asking them to help us to design what is good for them. Wash, where to start? <laughs> we all know it's, uh, again, uh, you know, I sometimes sound like a broken record, but this is a long-term solution to wash. I mean, you know, just by itself, we could control cholera just by wash, okay? So uh, uh, the thing is, you know, how are we going to do that? How are we going to, uh, to make sure that, uh, you know, there is some leverage to improve uh, uh, investment in mid-term, uh, longer-term uh, uh, action into wash. And this is not necessarily uh, just the, 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 uh, you know, the billion US dollars of, of investment of, uh, you know, uh, bringing uh, water and uh, hot and hot water in, in, in the sum, slums of all the capital cities. There are many other things that need to be done. But that costs a little bit more. And very clearly, just to be very frank with you, that costs more than asking for vaccine because somebody else is paying for the vaccine and nobody else is paying for wash. So this is a solution on which it's really essential to start working on and to continue working on. And I know that there are many countries that are making effort, but we need collectively to continue uh, you know, working to develop advocacy, support, uh, documentation. Again, we talk about surveillance and, uh, and the lack of data we have. It's even worse for WASH. So we need more data. We need more evidence. We need to, to build on some case success, also cases, things that are not necessarily that expensive, but a bit more, but that not expensive that we can demonstrate. And we can uh, also document the added value of that on cholera, but also on other disease. But this is clearly that has always been the case and that will remain a challenge but you know without wash we are not going to make progress uh, so just a quick word on on um, on the, uh, uh, the 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 next step that i know that a number of countries are you know as i mentioned at the beginning which is the development of their national cholera plan and uh, and i know that a number of you are really thinking about submitting into rrp so i think it's important to realize uh, uh, you know that irp it's still a very very new mechanism and huh? so that has been uh, basically piloted last year. There has been only three uh, NCPs that have been submitted thus far. Two have been approved, the third one being still in progress. Uh, but we know that there will be more, more, uh, uh, more coming. So we need to, to, to build on lesson learned. We need to, to look at, you know, uh, it's a very heavy work. There are a limited number of people that are participating to the process. The level of expertise which is required is it's broad. It's very broad, and of course, nobody, I, I think, have the level of astute uh, knowledge about uh, case management, laboratory, epidemiology, WASH, uh, surveillance, community engagement, coordination, oversight. I mean, you know, if you know these five leg sheep, please <laughs> send them, send the name to me. So we need to think about how to approach it in a different way, 
in order that not to become uh, a potential bo bottleneck in, in the future. So the, the people who have been participating to the, the, uh, the IRP has been extremely uh, committed and very, very supportive. But this is, uh, this is a very heavy process, and that's one of the limits of the partnership. It's we all know that all the people who are participating on a voluntary basis, they all have already a very busy, normal job. So we need to. Uh, so this is something that we are going to uh, to rediscuss also at the steering committee. There are a number of ideas that are floating, but you know I think it will be important to find ways also to get more uh, uh, resources dedicated to that to uh, to move forward. So I'm almost there. So of course I'm not going to go in all the detail, but we need to continue uh, uh, what is in process. Uh, uh, hopefully to be able to even go in a in a faster gear, but uh, that's uh, possibly a dream. But to support more country to implement, and this is really where we are at. It's really the implementation of the of the uh, of their plan. Uh, it's not just about the conception; it's how to practically implement it. Surveillance. We need to continue to collectively improve surveillance, including both the EP and the lab, um, uh, to target uh, further targets implementation of multi-sectorial activity in hotspot. Not all hotspot will require the same mix of uh, measures. So I mean, everything needs to be adapted to the context. Uh, wash, 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 and wash. Uh, to use uh, to continue, uh, you know, developing work on uh, uh, bet, uh, improving the the, uh, the 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 impact of the OCV, as we know that is the situation is not going to improve just by, uh, by because we would like it's going to improve uh, accessibility to healthcare. Uh, and healthcare is not just uh, hospital, huh, but uh, still flabbergasting to see that uh, still in a number of countries the. Uh, the notion of uh, can we have uh, immediately an ORS point is not as evident as what we thought we could so think. So, I mean, you know, there are very basic things that could be done that are not done. Community, I have discussed about, but also, and something that we continue to, to uh, we need to continue bearing in mind, it's a need to avoid having a too much siloed approach. All the different pillars are linked with one another, APN lab, OCV and surveillance, OCV and wash, case management and lab, etc., etc. So that's really something that we will need to continue working on the on the next year. So, and just to uh, finish, just want to thanks very quickly, and I'm going to go through the whole list. But I think it's uh, you know the GTFCC, it's you. We are just a secretariat. Fro is a chair, so the GTFCC is you. It's all of you. So it's through you that the things are, uh, have been moving. So a lot of people have been very actively engaged, uh, been providing a lot of support. Uh, more support is needed, uh, but it's also the country, with the effort that you have been doing, the progress you have been doing, uh, and more and more the kind of feedback and lesson learned you can provide also to your colleagues, because you know it's very important not to people for to repeat something that have been tried elsewhere that did not work. So. There was a lot of very good uh, exchange in the last meetings, uh, and I hope this is going to happen again in this meeting. Feel free, talk, ask questions, uh, raise your concern, raise your challenge. This is through that that we are going to learn. So thank you very much for your attention and uh, wishing you a very good meeting. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to ask Thomas.